haven't posted a video in a... Hi. I haven't posted a video in about four years, so I just thought I'd take a moment to um, explain how my thoughts have evolved since I posted these videos four years ago. Ultimately, this is a channel about freedom, and I'm going to explain what I mean here. When I first started posting videos, it was at a time when I was learning about economic freedom. And as I learned about economic freedom, or economics actually, and when you learn about economics, you inevitably learn about economic freedom, I learned that many of the common wisdoms that I thought to be true were just untrue. I learned that free trade was good for us and not bad for us. I learned that social security is terrible for us. I learned that ethanol is just a big government boondoggle. And I learned that speculators do not cause the harm that the media tells us they cause. In fact, speculators serve a valuable role. I've made some videos about some of these topics, especially um, the Social Security. I made a couple of videos about ethanol. And speculators, I didn't do a specific video about speculators. I did one about oil, which was about speculators. During this time, and I don't know if this is before or after I posted videos or not, but a professor handed me a paper called Great Myths of the Great Depression. This is the first time I realized that the things that they taught us in public school might have just not been true. In fact, when it came to the Great Depression, the things they taught us in public school, I would say were lies. The, the paper is called Great Myths. I would have gone a step further and called it Great Lies because the things that they told us were, were it was terrible. In fact, it led to a whole false philosophy about how governments should run. And this was the government school, of course, that provided us with this information. I'm not saying it's a big grand conspiracy, but it's kind of interesting that it worked out that the people who benefit from us are the ones who are teaching us these lies. Anyway, somewhere along the way, is actually before I got this paper, um, I voted for George Bush. I voted for George Bush because I had learned about economics and I learned that small governments were good for prosperity. George Bush told us he was for small government. And he also told us he was not for nation building or foreign wars. So, that's what I wanted. Small government, no nation building, no foreign wars. Perfect. No wars of aggression. So I voted for him, got the exact opposite. I, I was disillusioned. I didn't understand. He stood on the stage and he told us one thing and he gets in the office, he does something else. So I just kind of stored that in the back of my mind. And I became more interested in topics related to freedom, and not just economic freedom, but all kinds of freedom. I started listening to podcasts by the Cato Institute, and uh, I watched videos on YouTube um, about Judge An with Judge Andrew Napolitano. The Cato Institute covers all kinds of topics on freedom, but they're very focused on trying to get the government to be smaller. They're always trying to get into government. In fact, they have an office in Washington, D.C., and they invite people from Congress to their, their presentations or their staffers. And sometimes members of Congress present there. And their whole focus is about how to work with the government that we have. And Judge Andrew Napolitano, his primary focus is he talks about the Constitution. And he talks about how the government constantly does everything that is unconstitutional. Very little of what the government does is allowed under Article Section 8 of the Constitution, which is the only place where the government gets power. In addition to different podcasts and, and blogs and um, papers that I've read, I started to look for books. I got an account with Audible.com. I started listening to audiobooks. One of the books I listened to was a book called Triumph of Liberty. And basically, the book Triumph of Liberty was just a brief biography of all of these people for the last 2,000 years 
who have been the people like Andrew Napolitano or the people who have run the Cato Institute. The people who have always advocated for freedom in the world. One of the first people in the book, if not the first person that they talked about, was Cicero. Cicero was a Roman. He was built, he was born, not built, in 106 BC. So this is over 2,000 years ago. And Cicero talks about, in his papers, the exact same things that we talk about today when we try to fight for liberty. By fight, I don't mean with, with guns, I mean with ideas. And I've come to the conclusion that in 2,000 years, more than 2,000 years, nothing has really changed. The book is called A Triumph of Liberty, but I don't see the triumph. I just, I just don't. It's, it's just been the same forever. Stefan Molyneux on his channel, Steph Bot, he read a paper by Lawrence Reed called The Fall of Rome and Modern Parallels. And, and, and this just kind of parallels what I was saying. He talks about how Rome's history is very much a mirror of American history, and to some degree the whole Western civilization. Rome, the Rome that we know, was founded under a revolution, a revolution against tyranny. They wanted freedom from a tyrannical government, so they had an armed rebellion, and they became free. They developed a democratic republic with the smallest government that they could possibly decide. Having the government out of the lives of the average Roman for the average thing that they did during the average day allowed for great prosperity. Which is what we talked about just a minute ago when I said smaller government breeds prosperity. And prosperity came to Rome like it had come to no other civilization before because their government was small. But with great wealth comes great opportunity for government. And the government began to tax. And to gain favor of the people, they began to give some of their taxes away to the people. They didn't actually give away money, they gave wheat, and then later they gave bread. I highly recommend that you uh, watch this video because, uh, you know, I, I can't I can't do justice to it in this one. Um, but what happens is, once the Romans start giving away bread, more and more and more people line up to give bread, and eventually there are more people taking from the government than there are people filling it. Once the people start to line up, once you start to put grain in the trough, there will be more animals feeding at that trough than there are people to fill it. Or people feeding at the trough, I suppose, in this case. And that is what led to the fall of Rome. They went broke. They debased their currency. Does that sound familiar? The government just went broke. They expanded their empire. They grew and grew, seeking the wealth of other lands. But they had to pay their mercenaries, they had to pay their army, and they just couldn't afford it. And they had to pay off their own citizens, and they just couldn't afford that either. And then the society collapsed. The state is force. Everything the state does is force. Whether it's pass a law to say that you can or you can't do this, or to say that you can run your business this way, or you can run your business that way, or if they just want to tax people. Everything the state does, it does through force. If you don't do what the state says, if you don't give them the money that they demand, then they will throw you in a steel cage. If you don't go in the steel cage voluntarily, they will come to your house and they will force you into chains and they will put you in a steel cage. If you put up a significant amount of resistance to that force, they will shoot you dead. The state is force. And that's how states actually got started. 
The states started out as gangs. They were just gangs that went around and they stole from people. And then they would stake out territory to steal from the people year after year after year. They called it taxes, but it was just theft. They weren't doing it for the people. They were doing it to enrich themselves. And they would try to monopolize a certain territory, like I just said. And then other rival gangs would come in and try to take their territory. And these would be, and they would have wars. And sometimes a gang would get bigger and it would have more territory and more territory. And as it controlled the territory, it would skim off a little bit of the resources from all of the people, those are the taxes, in the territory and they would get more and more powerful. And eventually these gang leaders became known as kings. The people got tired of some of the kings. Some of the kings were good. And by good I don't mean they were good people. I mean they were good at manipulating people into giving them power. But every now and then a king would come along that would cross a line and the people didn't like it. And eventually the people started writing constitutions. The constitutions are an attempt to put people in control of the king, which is another way of saying to put people in control of the gang, the gang of thieves. But when the people are in control of the gang, it's still a gang, a gang of thieves. And this is what happened in Rome. The people were in control of the gang, and so the gang stole more and more and more until there was nothing left to steal. After learning this about Rome, I kind of had a sense of disillusionment. You know, what, what can you do? It seems inevitable. Once you have a state, you have a state that's capable of taking from one group and giving to another. You have a state that is capable of telling you how you can run your business and who can run business and, and, and where people can run businesses. The idea of minarchism, small government, just doesn't work. Because once you have a government, it's inevitable that it will just grow and grow and grow. The founders of America knew this, and this is why they said that they expected to have a revolution in every generation. Of course, we, did, we didn't have those revolutions because as people became prosperous, you know, nobody wants to fight a violent revolution, and even a non-violent revolution is fraught with risk. Most violent revolutions just bring about a more tyrannical dictator that is worse than the one that was there before. So it just doesn't work. So I, I didn't I don't really know what, what the answer is, but I do see some other peop some people out there with some ideas. Um One, one of those people is David Friedman. David Friedman is the son of Milton Friedman, and, and most people know Milton Friedman as one of the number one minarchists, small government people in the area of economics that there's been in a long time. David Friedman is his son, and he's pretty much seen the same thing that I've seen, and has decided that um, minarchy doesn't work. David Friedman is an anarchist. He believes that many of the things, everything actually, not many, everything that we have come to value as people that the state provides, he shows us how private parties can provide those things. And he believes in a society where there is no state. That's what it means to be an anarchist. There's no state. But And he, and he believes that the, the states can compete, or not the states, but the, um, the service providers can com compete with one another within the same land and, and provide you all the things that um, a state can provide. I highly recommend that you check out his videos. He doesn't have, I don't know if he has his own channel, but there's videos of him giving lectures all over YouTube. And again, this is a person, there's no way I can give his, um, his philosophy justice in the brief time that I had to do this video. I'm already talking for a long time here, so I'm, I'm going to move on. His son, Patrick Freedom, which would be Milton Friedman's grandson, 
has come up with a way to implement this stateless society and I don't know if it'll work or not but his idea is called seasteading which is building cities on the ocean and he doesn't want to control the vision of how each seastead would operate but his idea is that the different governments that run the seasteads would be in competition with one another and if you didn't like the way this government was operating you could move to another one and eventually he doesn't say this but I guess the idea is that the most prosperous seasteads would be the one with ones with the least government or no government at all or maybe a government that's not a government at all, but uh, the way David Friedman envisions it. So, why, why does any of this, this matter? Why, why should we make videos? What, what is the point of all of this? And, and, and the reason, the, the point of this is that the power of government comes from the people. And you can either escape from it, like Patrick Friedman suggests, or maybe you could just stop giving the government their power. And how do you do that? You just, well, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, be, before I get there, I just wanted to point out, governments know that the power comes from the people. This is why they have propaganda, this is why they kill the press, or they don't kill it, but they suppress the press and they try to control it. And it's also why Cicero met an untimely death. So, what, what is it that you can do about this? Well, the best thing that you can do is to learn. And to help others learn. And when people can see the force that is government, they'll be much more willing to not give the government the power to wield that force. Now I just wanted to talk a little bit about my channel. Let me just grab this this camera here. Um, get off of there. That took a little bit more effort than I thought it was going to. Um, I haven't done a lot of videos on my own in the last four years. But I have been posting playlists. Um, these two playlists down here are actually the ones that I've been working on. I haven't been working on them. I just see a good video I like and then I stick them in a playlist. There's a lot of videos in here about freedom, about economics, and, and there's just there's just a lot of good stuff to learn in there. I started, um, oh these are my videos up here, I started two new playlists because these ones are just kind of a mixture of everything that I like. So I started two new playlists. This one has one video in it. It's called News and History, Not from TV or Public School. These are just things... These are videos that show how the world works in a way that is different from what you've probably heard on TV or in public school. Prepper videos. You know, ever since I studied the fall of Rome and um, and its modern parallels and then we look at the way the world is is going today the whole idea of being prepared for any kind of chaos that might be headed our way certainly seems prudent prepping is about being free in your home as free as possible in your home regardless of what's been going on outside your home and so I've, I've definitely caught some interest in the prepper movement. I haven't done a lot of prepping myself yet. However, it is something that definitely, like I said, it interests me. Um, it interests me and it is something that I'm going to, to be getting into. And maybe I'll do a, video, a couple of videos about that myself. And maybe I'll flesh out some of these ideas. But this video is 20 minutes long, so I'm just going to say goodbye and have a nice day.